Thumpers, what's going on? We're back for another fantasy football we know shit pod. We got Tyler, uh, a guest who is awful at fantasy football, and Stu, who is like a 44-time champion, also on this call, and self-deprecating Jay on the same call. Uh, boys, any feedback from this past weekend, guys, you want to drop any pickups? What do you guys feel? I really appreciate the disrespect. I really I, I showed everyone up in our fantasy league this year, this week. When you guys put up like 80 points each. Jay, how do you feel after your uh, your your week this week? Like how would that go for you? You know, it take it takes a bigger man to admit that you, you suck at fantasy. But Ty, I'm feeling fantastic. I was playing a juggernaut this week in the short one in TBG. So the short one is Stu. And I absolutely manhandled him. I think I, I held him to the least amount of points he's put up in fantasy for like the past three seasons. And I did that, Ty, with dressing an awful roster. I had so many points left on the bench. He just got fucking dummy. So as an up-and-coming team who's trying to, you know, dig my heels in in the TBG League, winning 88-85, that's going to do nothing but just raise the confidence. And at the same time, the first-place team has now got a strike against them. By week's end, we got Stu in first, you in second, me in third. I'm fucking feeling fantastic, dude. And I'm glad you brought up the score because I don't want people thinking when you're getting all, all cocky and saying you kicked my ass. I don't want people thinking you won by more than two points. I, I, <laughs> I, I kicked the shit out of you. That was my ba- Those were my backups. It was garbage time. I didn't even, to be honest, I wanted you to win. I wanted you to go undefeated. So just for the pod brand. You, you didn't even give me the fucking courtesy. I, I had to bench my team in order for the fucking for you to win. It was pathetic. Not even a hundred. Come on. I know. I'm not even trying here, Stu. Fuck. But all joking aside, Ty, you did have a great showing against uh, the King of Hearts, as Stu and I call him. King of Hearts, uh, man. Dad, man, Dad I, had a tough week this week, dude. He had CMC go down, and he had AJ Brown go down, like right at the start of the game. So that's fantasy, man. That happens. So no no disrespect, back. Mike. You'll come back. You know, but to be honest, with Mike. <laughs> We're making that one stick. Um, yeah, Ty, your team's definitely come around after that fucking week one shit kicking by Stu. You definitely your roster looks much stronger than I thought it was. My team, I don't know why I have a back quarterback in that league. It's the fucking dumbest thing ever. <laughs> I don't know why either. And there's fucking like 30 quarterbacks on the wire, and I'm fucking there we I, I, but it's just in my brain. If two good quarterbacks available, I want both just to like think about who I'm going to dress and blame it whenever I end up losing, which is inevitable. Um, I think, I think I'm the only one that's able to say right now I'm three and one in the clear with one matchup pending, which is pretty nice. Nice little rebound. Are you, are your guys' matchups locked in right now? Uh, I have a decent amount of the. Cowboys Eagles game, but it's a Cowboys Eagles, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a decent I, which is weird considering like how little faith I had in both those. I mean, not, I had I had okay faith in the Cowboys, but you know, a decent amount of fantasy relevant players coming on this week. There is there is one thing that can actually ruin my fantasy week, and that's if Greg Zerline puts up twenty four points. If he puts up twenty four fucking points, I'm not recording this pod next week. I deserve so much better than that. I had such a nice matchup on paper. I did great. And the guy I faced had CMC. So it's like, it's a punt away week for him. And yeah, so he needs 24 from him. Everything else is pretty much locked in. For league, I scored 72. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you should keep that to yourself or people are going to stop listening to this. Yeah, no, more people are going to stop listening to this. Dude, my brand. My brand is I am shit of fantasy, but it's, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm living off. That's the way. Change your name on the stump th- on the stump like fantasy tracker. There's flirting with single digits. That's you, Jay. Seventy <laughs> points, man. <laughs> Seventy. But it. But just just so everyone remembers, that's the one where I have three Seahawks. I have Russ, Lockett, and DK. So their score is going to pretty much dictate how I do. So not very well this week. Yeah. You'll see moving forward. Um, speaking of fantasy, any quarterbacks you guys see streaming? I see one that I really like, but I'm gonna let you guys go first. Any quarterbacks you see that are streamable or or waiver worthy, which is a different combo. 
I'll, I'll get mine out of the way because mine haven't really been hitting. Uh, Daniel Jones didn't do much last week, which fucking sucks. He got such a hot start, too. Like, he got, like, 10 points. He had a like, fine game, though. Like, he, it was he fine. Wasn't, it, yeah. it wasn't bad. He got, what, seven, 17 points? Uh, 16 and a half, 17, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. Uh, this, week, this week, though. Oh, that, that's fine from a streamer. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, fine for a streamer. Um, this week I'm looking at uh, Taylor Henneke. He's six percent off roster. He's got a good match with the Falcons, and he's been delivering the last few, like, uh, like uh, so far this season. Pretty excited about him. Also, Justin Fields is only fifty-seven percent rostered still. Uh, that was a Yahoo. Um, against Detroit, I don't think uh, Detroit should be looked at as like, oh, maybe their defense is okay after playing Baltimore. Hollywood Brown had two like sure touchdowns that he dropped. And then he dropped another one on like the 20-yard line, which he could have very well broke. So that game should have shouldn't have been as close as it was. So Justin Fields could actually have a good showing out this week as well. And not being that rostered might be a nice pickup. I if if I can interject, I think one thing we gotta clear is he's 50%, sorry, 57% rostered, Justin Fields. I th- I wish Yahoo would come out with like percentage started because there's so many dynasty and keeper leagues that that guy's taken in for sure. Mm-hmm. For like those are real, like two real good underdog picks, like really good. Taylor Henneke, six percent, and Justin Fields. I, I, I think I lean towards Henneke. How you I think I, 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 I uh, Fields was like my kind of second pick there. Henneke's my number one for sure. If you're streaming this week, Stewart. I, I mean, I still think Sam Darnold is a stream option. Fucking but, right, and someone just to pick up. But if you're just streaming, you just need somebody for like a week or two because you have bad matchups or whatever, I'm going to steal Jay's answer. I'm going with Kirk Cousins this week in the one league that I do have to stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think he faces the Browns first, and then he faces the Lions the week after. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I believe so. I believe I, I'm doing something illegal right now and driving and on the phone. But I'm pretty sure it's Lions. I will actually look at the chat quick. Oh, Thank I'll you. look it up. Thank you for stealing. So it's it's uh, Browns yeah, and Browns Atlanta. first, yeah. yeah right. Two two teams were that have that have allowed a lot of quarterback points already. Mm. May as well just fucking keep riding the wave. Kirk Cousins is also weirdly like kind of under the radar, having a very good season so far. Mm-hmm. Fucking great, yeah. A great and without without Dalvin, Dalvin Cook yesterday, yeah. Madison was just as good, but that's another conversation. Uh, his play action stuff looked just as effective. Yeah. So I. The fact he's only 72%, we should do like a before and after. After Wednesday, that number will skyrocket. That, that'll be 100%. Better. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I also, I got to imagine Justin Fields, he's at 57%, you said, Ty? That's what I saw on Yahoo. Yeah. Did that go up or down? Because I feel like he was drafted in so many leagues. It as had like to have gone down, right? Because he had so much hype coming into the season. Everyone's like, oh, let's get Justin Fields at like eighth or ninth, like those stupid and, and, fucking like, picks and quarterback. This is no. the week I expected him to get the fucking promotion. Mm-hmm. I expected week four he was going to come up, and week two he comes in halfway through the game. Week three he sucks. Like, it, it, you, know what, you know what sucks about the Justin Fields scenario, and you guys could be right, is that Matt Nagy is one of the worst coaches in the NFL, and he's come out and said it's Dalton's job. When Dalton's back, it's his job. So for those leagues where it's not a keeper or a dynasty, uh, that kind of sucks to hear. Like, I'm going to drop Justin Fields in my keeper because I shouldn't have two quarterbacks with Russ. But at the same time, hearing that from a fucking coach, it's fucking yeah. really, it's really annoying. And I don't, I feel like that number sort of stayed where it's at. 57% feels just about, just about right. A few leagues he wasn't drafted in for me, at least. Yeah. Uh, so I am no longer doing anything illegal. So I'm going to, I think we're good for quarterbacks there, right? Yeah. I go to running backs here, and a guy that is only 16% rostered on Yahoo, I feel has a huge upside. I feel like I've said his name on a pod before, but Gio Bernard, and especially in PPR leagues, his usage this past week is going to be more like what they use him for. I don't think he's going to be touchdown dependent. You know who he reminds me of, Ty? J.D. McKissick. Mm-hmm. You remind oh, yeah, yeah, you were talking about like a scat back type style, yeah. Ah, and I, I feel like Geo, that, that offense is, is tough to get a piece of, but in a running back starving fantasy world that we live in, they got Pats and Fish in the next two weeks. I, I'm going to be owning him a lot more. I, I'm going to pick him up in a few leagues. I don't know if I'm going to put waiver claims, but 
but I'm going to be owning. I feel like Stu and I also own him somewhere. But yeah, that's my. That's his, my guy. He looked like he really hurt his knee. Geo. Uh, yeah, was it was it in the end zone in the game yesterday? He scored. He scored. He a touchdown. scored. And I think he hurt his knee. He hurt himself like when he, he scored. Him. Right. I, I remember yeah, that. Yeah. It looked yeah. like he really hurt his knee. I, but I, I haven't seen anything since about it. So maybe it just looked bad, but he was fine. It did. Yeah. Like he stayed down for a sec when I remember when he's in the yeah, end. Yeah. He stayed down for a sec, right? So it is something so, to kind of keep an eye on. But I definitely don't like that. look into it if you're mm-hmm. thinking of picking him up. But he's yeah, not even, I mean, I, I think the thing is with Geo is at this point Ronald Jones is a droppable player. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's Leonard Fournette and Geo. And do you have that much faith in Leonard Fournette being right? The, like solid number one, never going to lose his job running back? Because I don't. Not, not in the regular season. That's fucking for day. Yeah, and and you, but the thing that kind of steers me away from Gio Bernard is that you know, do you, do you really want to trust Tom Brady to use him consistently? Because I don't. I I, don't. I, I, you know, do you? I've never wanted a running back where Tom Brady was the fucking quarterback. Because yeah, you never know if he's going to use him that game. He's and got too many weapons too, right? He's got Godwin. He's he's got Gronk. He's got Daniel Brown. Like you know what I mean? I mean, unless Brown's still injured this week or whatever. But or... by the way, Godwin went off. And, yeah, he did. He did. Uh, and I mean, I don't, just on a humble brag again, Clyde did very well. I do. You're 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 blowing it. I had all these things I was going to bring up and congratulate for Clyde. I'm I'm. I think it's a bittersweet because I traded him last week because I was like, fuck it. Like they're not going to use him. Fuck it. Let's just get something for him. And then he goes off and scores a touchdown, has a good game. It's like, ah, oh, it was too early. <laughs> yeah. Clyde, the it was, it was it was sweet for me because everything that I saw about him was saying to sit. And I was yeah. like, nah. No, I, I imagine most people didn't, just because like, how can you sit someone like that? Like, well, I don't, I as we, it's a nice I, gut feeling, right? Just because he had what he's done in the past and like the just the hype he had coming into the season. Yeah, no, I, I, I when you ever, well, as soon as you said he's gonna have a good week, I was like, I can't deny it fully. Like, 100%, I think he could to come, go off, especially against the Chargers, too. That's not that scary of a matchup. I will, I will say, I love the Godwin, <laughs> and I, I don't even know his final numbers, but watching that game, it's a great call. Uh, Clyde putting up 14 in a standard, 16 in a PPR. I mean, that's good. I can't say it's fucking great. And Tim Fumble the ball did the roller coaster of emotions you must have been dealing with because there was a world where he gets fucking doghouse right there. Mm-hmm. Like fuck it the way he did. I'm I mean, I guess after that, having a 14 and a standard or almost a 15 is nice, but uh yeah, the the Godwin call was fantastic. He's he's been a fucking machine. He's been yeah. absolutely he, he seems to be the the wide out with the highest floor on Tampa. Highest floor, yeah. yeah. Like he, he's getting the ball. Regard, like Antonio Brown can go weeks where he gets nothing. Fucking Mike Evans has gone two weeks where he's gotten pretty much nothing. But Godwin's gotten he's eclipsed, I think, seventy yards in every game. He's gotten three touchdowns now. Like he he's he's getting he's getting the most consistent looks. I want to be right out there. I want, I, want to it. What? I want to clarify the geo the geo take is strictly for streaming right i get that he's on like a fucking loaded off i get that it's just more like if he's available and if something happens to Fernet, yeah his usage rate is only going to go up go up by default because ronald Jones, oh i was saying it. i don't get me wrong i don't think he's gonna be a game breaker but he should be able to get you 10 to 15 mm-hmm. yeah. uh any rbs for you guys well, I mean, let's just address the elephant in the room. Cuba Hubbard. We talked about this on Sunday. I'm embarrassed for how many leagues that don't have him rostered. You see it's still 25% on Yahoo right now. It, but, well, I mean, it, it'll, it'll jump. It'll skyrocket, absolutely. But how did it not go up I mean, over the The shitty part is, like, there's going to be – it's going to be, like, 70% tomorrow, which is fucked. You don't think it's going to be, like, close to like 90? Everything. You don't think it's going to be at least 90? The thing is that – no, I don't. That's crazy, man. Like, CMC's out for like three weeks, they're saying. And he's got three good matchups coming up. Dallas, Philly, Minnesota. I'm with you. I think he should have been drafted at 100%. I just <laughs> think that people are the worst. That's crazy. No, but, 
but he only put up fucking eight in a stand. Like, yeah, he's going to be the fucking cowbell, so to speak. But he only put up eight in a stand. It's not like, I think, yeah, he should definitely be rostered. I'm more impressed with the Madison, you, your loyalty to Alexander Madison than I am to that. Like, yeah. Joe Hawk is going to have, like, there's going to be peaks and valleys there. I Like, he should definitely be rostered. Don't get me wrong. In every league, I'm, in every format. But he just hasn't broken out yet. So the 90% might come whenever he fucking, he breaks a big run, has four or five little scat back catches with a touchdown. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but it could be, it's going to be it's it's too late at that point, right? Because then your chance of getting him fucking significantly drop as well. Like I think this is the week to take that chance on him, or even last week it was the week to take the chance on him. Or not, not sorry, not last week. Like like last week leading up to this week was the was the week. You know, had I known that he was so poorly rostered in Yahoo and NFL leagues, I would have said to draft to to pick him up on the wire after week one. But I just assumed that people weren't this fucking stupid. They mm. named him explicitly as the backup to Christian McCaffrey. That's like that. That it's as, as surefire as it gets to drop that guy. Embarrassing. Anyways, if you are in one of those leagues that is so stupid that he's on the wire, take advantage of your dumbass friends and pick him up. The <laughs> love when Stu comes in hot. Uh, that was the only one for running backs I really had to. Um, I was just surprised that it's it's still going to be there. So, I mean, yeah, go all in on him, I think, this week as well. Um, anyone else for running backs? Jay, you got one? No, oh, just Gio. Just Gio, right? Okay. Super thin up there. It's ugly. Yeah. All right. Why I, had a, I had another one. Oh, okay. But I wrote it down. I have to see where it is now. That's cool. That's cool. We have time. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, Jay, Jay can just chain smoke till we uh, finish this. No problem. <laughs> oh, uh, Kenneth Gainwell. He seems to be getting more and more looks. Miles Sanders was very disappointing last year. I feel like he's on a he's on a clock right now. May Have you well watched? Have... Him? Sorry. Have you watched him? Miles Sanders. No, uh, Gainwell. Is he like? Is he like a quick? burst running back type guy or what's his what's his deal guy i haven't watched a bunch of them no same here i'm gonna watch him tonight yeah mm-hmm. I'm very very intrigued because you keep saying his name an ultra cup and if you look anything like i think he he was in college i will probably make a move from him yeah and it's okay uh can i give you guys my my wide receiver stash i will quickly yeah. so I understand the Colts are 0 3. I understand, suck. I understand our offensive line sucks. I get it all. T.Y. Hilton should be returning mid to late October. If you have stash space for him, I would suggest stashing him. I don't think the Colts will continue to be this shit. And even if they are, it is a, a one year deal. And if he sits out the entire year, I can't imagine that helps his stock in the offseason. I feel like he comes back, he at least gives you a game or two. I feel like in the stretch he'd be returning would be Texans time. Historically, he is incredible against the Texans. So if you have stash space, a free IR spot, and want to roll the dice with good old Jay, T.Y. Hilton, that is it. And his he was not rostered very heavily in, in Yahoo formats. He was something like 20%, I think. I feel like he was in the 20s. Okay. Any opinions on that? Oh, I'm the same as kind of the same fear as you. I'm just scared of any Colts players. I have Pittman right now. I'm just like, fuck. Like, I don't know if this is going to work out at all because the Colts just look so fucking bad week after week that, right now. Fucking, that is the only Colt I have any loyalty right now, or uh, loyalty right now to in uh, fantasy mm-hmm. is Pittman. He has Jonathan. been like, he's been delivering a bit too. He hasn't been awful. He just hasn't done anything that's just jumps off the page at me yet. And I'm just like, fuck. I could have like drafted him too high actually at this point. I'm not too sure. I think it was like, seventh eighth round or something like that and he just he, he barely like he's putting up numbers for that round and i was expecting that to be a steal yeah fair enough Stu. uh for wideouts i think i mean we mentioned him last week and he still has a lot of uh he's, he still has a lot of time to be picked up tim patrick uh, did we even talk did we talk about him two weeks ago yeah it was two weeks ago i, I mentioned to pick him up He's still not even 50% roster now. That's crazy, man. Yeah. It's like no one's been rolling. Yeah, he made a great fucking catch yesterday. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like he's brought all the leagues I'm in. Like he's fourteen percent rostered on NFL. Wow, that is so low for him, man. He no he's one's... gotten almost ten points every week. Like in my PPR format, he's uh twelve, thirteen, and thirteen last week, or thirteen, twelve, thirteen, something like that. But yeah, it's it's he's been he's been very fine for for a waiver pickup. Yeah, um, but I also would be hard pressed not to say Marquez Callaway. There's this is more of a short term investment, I think. Traquan Smith is due back. I mean, he's eligible to come back from injury anytime now. And I know Michael Thomas is still expected back. Marcus Calloway, Calloway seems to be getting a lot of looks from James Winston. You don't want James Winston throwing the ball, but or I don't. No. <laughs> but Marcus Calloway seems to be the favorite for receptions after Alvin Kamara. Mm-hmm. So take advantage of all you can. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that one either because like, like you said, like you don't really want Jameis to to um, throw in the ball, but there are weeks where Jameis has like five touchdowns, like he did the one week. Well, he will like actually those bombs that he throws sometimes will just land in their hands. So, yeah, yeah not bad at all. Uh, but he, he had a great preseason, and a lot of people jumped on that early, and he didn't do anything for the first two weeks. Mm-hmm. But he did very well against New England, and the next couple teams are the Giants and the WFT before a bye. So. How about yeah, WFT too? Be WFT is like a team to like beat up on right now, which is so surprising. Josh Allen looked insane. Incredible! Him. I played him this week in a league. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding he me?" Man? Like forty points. He couldn't like, miss. Another, another guy you could fucking pick up as wide out. Just roll with this fucking Josh Allen bit. Manuel Sanders. Manuel Sanders, dude. I was gonna go. I'm going the other way on that. I was gonna go Cole Beasley. Uh, fifty three percent rostered on Yahoo right now. And, uh, man, his targets are one below Diggs right now. He's got 30 targets in three games, and he put up 20 this week, which obviously, like, he's going to be a hot topic to, to grab right now. Uh, his matchups, too. His match, the next five matchups are Houston, KC, Tennessee, Miami, Jacksonville. So these aren't, like, necessarily tough defenses he's going up against right now. And if he's getting those looks, especially the way Josh Allen's playing right now, man, he could definitely be someone you could, you could start in a receiver spot right now if he can put up, like, 15, 16 points in a PPR format. Yeah, like St- Stevon Diggs is going to be the locked in WR one for Buffalo, yeah. and there's no question about that. But he's going to have to throw it to other people, and Sanders and Beasley are places to start. I mm-hmm. think another one, just moving on to tight ends, is Dawson Knox. I okay, saw so Dawson Knox early like- in the season to try and pick him up, and I was I was I wasn't sure, but like after last week, especially like he's getting the looks as well, man. What did I'm you say? I'm calling bullshit on all this. You guys are fucking just jumping on Washington football team matchup. Every bill is being fucking thrown out. I just the main problem I had was with it. it you guys said three names so far: Dawson Knox, tight end. Sure, makes sense. Cole Beasley, meh. Emmanuel Sanders is never putting up those numbers against any other defense other than the Washington football team through the air. I or, just have a or maybe the Texans like this week. Yeah. No. No, but the, that's the thing. I, I don't think any pass defense is as bad right now as the football team. You look at every wide receiving core that's played them through three weeks. It's been like, oh, fuck yeah. I remember Sterling Shepard was like a hot name there. How did he do this week on the Giants? Like, it just, I think it's really easy. And I'm not saying it's all wrong here, guys. As streaming options, sure. I'm just not sipping on the, the Kool-Aid. Whoever plays the football team, give me a piece of those guys. But I just think they're that bad in pass defense. Does that make sense? Right. Like it, they're, they're definitely a, a team to pick on, but I think the yeah. Texans are also a team to pick on, and they have them next week. Mm-hmm. Okay, f- fair enough. Hey, Dawson Knox, I think at that position, I'm sort of turning turning into you with it. It's just it's super hard to stream tight ends. Yeah, you're, just, you're guessing through a touchdown. Yeah, I'm totally yeah. fine. I like ties. Ties, say your name. Cole Beasley. No, no, no. The tight end. Oh, for the tight end? I was like, I was like, well, you just said you hated it. What the fuck is this no, game no, you're playing? My bad. Sorry. Uh, no, tight no, end. No. I'm going to, I'm definitely, like, here's one name that I'm definitely going to say wrong right now. I'm going to let everyone know that. I, um, that's what I wanted you to say. Pat, <laughs> Pat Freer, Freer Muth. Uh, for Pittsburgh, 8% rostered right now. Uh, his targets have been going up over the past two games. He got four, four in week two, five last week, and a touchdown last week, too. 
and going up against Green Bay, who's been allowing points to pretty much everyone so far, even Detroit. I mean, only put up 17, but they had a good first half against them at least. I think that's a great matchup for them. And especially um, just, I mean, Pittsburgh can come out and have a good offensive game. I'm not that, I'm not giving up on their offense necessarily. Them as a team giving up on, but they can come out and uh, showcase that. So just to kind of stick with the very, very, very solid sleeper picks from tight end for me right now, it is Pat, uh, Pat F, we're going to call him from Pittsburgh. I, I really like the Pat F one because I was at softball yesterday and uh, we were talking about Big Ben and I'm like, who's their tight end? Their tight end has to be decent. And that name came up and I'm like, you know what? Ice cream truck, boys. Big Nice. Big um, no, but I, th- I think that's a really good streamable name. Looks like Big Ben can't stretch the field right now. So tight end option is fantastic for him. Uh, Gerald Everett, I'm just going to throw it out there. If Tyler Lock gets hurt, Russ doesn't have as many weapons as people think he does. Again, you're just you're playing bingo here, hoping to get a touchdown somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Everett on uh, on the Seahawks. I'll throw out another one if you want. Tyler Conklin look uh, Con- Conklin 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 Conklin. Yeah, he looked good last week last uh, night for the uh, Vikings. Yeah, and while I saw the game, I couldn't watch it very closely, but. He looked good, but he also looked like he's just a clear-cut tight end one with a quarterback that's throwing very well right now. I agree with that, Stu. The only thing I'm scared of is that uh, the Browns' defense has played really well so far. I know it's only a three-game sample, but they're one of the top defense right now, pass or rush right now. That's the only thing that scared me away from that pick. Otherwise, like, everything lines up, though. Like he, is, he had a great week last week, definitely the number one. I watched that Minnesota game really closely, and yeah, Kirk Cousins looks great right now. So... Um, I think the pros do outweigh the cons there, actually. There is just one fear element with Brown's defense, but it's too small of sample size, I think. This just broke, and this might be a new one. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't pick him up just yet. Josh Gordon just signed with the Chiefs. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, of that's all cool. teams to sign with, that one's pretty interesting. I think the Josh Gordon move, is such a Chiefs brand move, and I hope it works out for him because very few careers have been ruined by marijuana as much as Josh Gordon. So I'm actually cheering for him. I hope he fucking, I hope he lands somewhere, fucking has a good season and gets paid. I feel like he won't get used very much, but yeah. yeah. Like, where does Josh Gordon really have a spot on that team, man? Like, as far as like, the, the receiver core is set, it's good. I I don't know that he, I, I don't I haven't seen him play football in a while, but I can't. Yeah. See well, Hardman is that much better than him, from what I remember of Josh Gordon. I mean, yeah, he's not going to get Tyreek looks. I think the I Chiefs. Just imagine, right I just imagine he's gotten worse from not playing. Sure, like significantly. Yeah. Like yeah, you, when you're at that level, taking the better part of what five years off. You guys, you guys think he fits like he or he fills a Sammy Watkins type spot on that team? A possession receiver doesn't have blow away speed, but you know they, they don't really have possession receiver guys that I can think of. So maybe, maybe that's the spot. I, don't know. I feel like he could come back and have like one random game where he goes off. Yeah, no one dresses and him in. Disappear forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, how I, I feel. Know. Josh Gordon could have it. <laughs> I could totally fucking see that. Yeah. Did anybody? Did it? Was anybody in a league that the Justin Tucker? kick affected a matchup like no i didn't not that i not that i seen no. not that i saw but i i wasn't facing him and i never how much would that kick be worth though it's like three points yeah. for that and it really depends on your league kick like i've been in leagues where that would be six points that's what i like i think it's i think generally that would be six, a lot a lot of leagues would be six points for that i'm in one league where i think everything is three points except for 40 plus, and that's those are worth four points. That's it. Oh, okay. And oh, then it doesn't go like five another, points. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't even, I have no idea how my kicker point systems work league to league. I just don't really. Who cares? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I'm just going to put out a kicker and do it well. Awesome. Yeah. I, all the leagues I'm in, it goes like from 30 is three points, from 40 is four, 50 is five, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I don't. I would just be shocked that it didn't affect any matchup like across fantasy by like fucking imagine just a single singular point you lose by and that bullshit fucking kick that should have never happened happened. Yeah. Just, 
yeah, it'd be rough. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, they can Detroit can piss and moan and all they want about that. They were lucky to be in that position, man. I lost my week because Hollywood Brown dropped touchdown passes. So anyone who's gonna bitch about that and be like, oh, it shouldn't have been all like fuck off. It could be worse. I'm gonna bitch because I'm in a survivor. I'm in I'm in a survivor that it cost me. So that 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 hurt me. Oh. The if there would have been 400 people gone. It would have been sweet, but see la vie, right? C'est la vie. Yeah. Uh, Stumpers, hope you enjoyed the episode. Shout out to Dylan for the music as always. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment on YouTube and listen to us on both platforms because we sound even better on one as opposed to the other. Thanks a lot. Enjoy and do not text and drive. We just passed a foreign city sign, your feet on the dash, you got your favorite top on, I got my foot on the gas.